Most of Ruapehu, members of North Island Ski Clubs, are building no fewer than 11 huts, which will be their operational bases during the skiing season. Over 5,000 feet up, these members of the Tongariro Club are racing against time to get their hut weatherproof before the snows come. Further round the mountain, members of the Aurangi Club run into the first snow of the year while carrying in the last of 30 tons of building material they've manhandled up the mountain track. It's tough going carrying in everything from the cement to windows, but it's the only way to reach most of the hut sites, and even the girls take their share of the load. Over the ridge, and the Aurangi hut is in sight at last. Every fortnight for two years, voluntary working parties have spent their weekends on the job. Most clubs have members who are builders by trade, and under their supervision, the work is nearly finished. When completed, this hut will provide comfortable accommodation for 40 members. You can't ski with housemaid's knees, so take it easy, girls. The enthusiasm and hard work that have gone into the building of these 11 huts will be more than rewarded by the comfort and shelter they'll provide for many a skiing season on Ruapehu. Athletic Park Wellington and the British Isles and the New Zealand Rugby Union teams take the field for the third of four tests. With the first game drawn and the second won by New Zealand, this may be the vital match of the rubber. British Isles win the toss, Scott kicks off for New Zealand and the referee orders a scrum at the halfway. There are 42,000 people, an overcast sky, a few showers, not much wind, and the ground is soft after a week's rain. British Isles hook the ball from the first scrum of the match and Kyle sends it to touch just past the 10-yard mark. The British Isles backs have it again, but Matthews is brought down. From a ruck it goes to Bledon Williams, their captain for today, who left foots it for touch with a beautiful kick just short of the corner. The game has started well and the grandstand critics are happy. From the ruck it goes over the New Zealand goal line. Scott gathers in, dodges one man, kicks for touch from in goal, finding it about ten yards out. The kind of play that makes strangers in the crowd old friends. From a scrum, Bevan gets it for New Zealand, passes to Scott, who's coming to the back line as an extra man, but the referee penalises New Zealand for a scrum infringement and Robbins takes the kick for British Isles. It's over, and British Isles lead 3-0. From a line out, the forwards pack round, and the New Zealanders hook it back to Bevan, who gives it to Haig. Haig tries to go through on his own, but is well tackled by Kyle and Mackay. Rimmer kicks ahead, it's picked up by Roper and thrown back to Scott. Scott passes infield at the halfway mark to Roper. He's stopped, and the New Zealand forwards overrun the ball. Now Bevan has it. Ian passes to Simpson, who takes it down to the British Isles 25. The ball rolls loose and Kyle kicks it into touch. Cleaver puts the ball into the scrum for the British Isles. He dodges Crowley, runs round the scrum, cuts out two men and hands it to Bledon William, who races down the field on his own. Mate stops Williams and his pass to Nelson goes astray. Clifford picks it up and his pass is intercepted by Haig, who runs across and kicks for touch. New Zealand hook the ball and Bevan gives it to Haig. Haig throws out a high one. It's intercepted by Bledon Williams and he kicks just as he's tackled. Scott gathers it in, dodges two men and kicks upfield. The British Isles back to pack again. Roper downs Williams and his pass is intercepted by Elbridge, the New Zealand captain who passes it out to Mates on the wing, and Matthews just misses him. Cleaver gets Mates and his pass to Roper is forward. Bevan puts the ball into a scrum inside the British Isles 25. New Zealand are now playing one man short, but Elbridge makes a determined bid for the line. He stops, the ball goes at loose, and Skinner dives across but overruns the ball. A narrow escape for the visitors and a disappointment for the New Zealand supporters. Next, Crowley dives for it, but Cleaver dives too and just stops the ball crossing the line and it's kicked back into the forward. It comes out to Haig who goes for the corner with Mates outside him. He passes out, but Mates finds Thomas in the way. The referee awards New Zealand a penalty for obstruction and Scott takes the kick. 
He drops beside the post, and Clifford takes it and runs across the goal line. He's tackled, and the ball rolls loose. Bevan gets it, sends it along the New Zealand back line. It gets as far as Elbridge. He loses it, and now the British are back to taking play right down the field. Rimmer puts the ball into the scrum for the visitors. Carly breaks away with it, but Rimmer takes it from him and dies passes to William, who kicks the touch. Half time and time for a stretch. The score, British Isles, three points, a penalty goal, and New Zealand nil. After half time, New Zealand are playing too short in the forwards with Elbridge playing his extra back. The ball comes along the New Zealand line to Johnson. He passes to Elbridge, and Elbridge races to the line and crashes over in a tackle. Gallant effort by New Zealand's captain, who just returned to the field after having four stitches put in his pocket. Hayes takes the kick. It's outside the post, and the score is now three all. From a line off, the ball goes to Rimmer, not to Kyle, who cuts between Hague and Roper, but his pass to Williams is forward. On a scrum, Bevan gets the ball out to Haig, and Haig out to Roper. The ball goes loose, Matthews picks it up, fends off mates and kicks for touch. A few minutes later, New Zealand are awarded a penalty, and Scott has a shot. It's over. New Zealand now leads six to three, but a penalty to British Isles gives Robbins a chance to equalize. A good kick, but just outside the post. With only a few minutes left, and New Zealand leading by the centre margin of three points, both sides are playing all out. British Isles need at least a draw to save the rubber, and New Zealand have won it if they can hang on to their lead and take this game. The defence holds on both sides, and full time comes with the final score, 6-3 to New Zealand, who won the test rubber with two wins and a draw.